Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome into the video. So in this one, we're going to be going over the crypto market and more specifically Bitcoin. Is this massive crash in the crypto market a buying opportunity or is the crypto market going to be done for and did we see highs last year? We're going to be going over some super interesting historical charts in this video, giving us the best thoughts and ideas of what could potentially happen next. And I'll be giving my opinions on whether I'm buying or not and where I see it going in the future at the end of the video. All right, so getting into it, let's talk about the Bitcoin cycles. So about every four years, Bitcoin goes through an event called the halving. What this does is it cuts in half the reward for mining Bitcoin transactions. So it cuts in half Bitcoin's inflation rate and the rate in which new Bitcoin enters circulation. In essence, it skews the supply and the demand to the demand side. And since there's less Bitcoin entering circulation, therefore resulting in Bitcoin price rising. Taking a look now at the historical logarithmic price chart of Bitcoin, and I drew those vertical lines when each having happened, and this was in November 2012, July 2016, and May of 2020. As you can see, each one of these having events started the next Bitcoin cycle. Historically, each time that a having happened, it resulted in a massive Bitcoin price boom followed by a bust, and then mostly stagnant until the next having event happened after both of those boom and bust phases. So if we compare the current chart to this, it looks like 2020 and 2021 were the boom phase where we hit new highs and pumped up big time, and now we are currently in the bust phase of the cycle. If we follow the historical trend, Bitcoin will bottom by late 2022 to early 2023, bounce a little bit from there, and then take off into new highs during the next cycle, which is currently expected to be around May of 2024. Now, a couple caution signs and risks to the trend to take note of. It's currently each cycle high was not breached below during the next cycle. Currently though, we are seeing Bitcoin drop below 20K in the 2017 cycle high, which is the first time that this has ever happened in history. So one more thing that's very interesting is on the weekly chart, the RSI or relative strength index indicator is currently below 25, which means that it's heavily oversold. And this is the most oversold that it's ever been since 2012, which is right after going public. It has only dropped below 33 different times historically before this. Two of those barely dipped right below. Another interesting chart is the rainbow price chart from blockchain.net. So it uses the halving cycle along with the parabolic linear price graph based on historical price action to map out the best times to buy and sell Bitcoin. Currently, it has dropped into the dark blue section of the graph, which according to this, it's in the, I quote, basically a fire sale price level. Now, I personally think we should just take graphs like this with a grain of salt, but it is interesting to look at nonetheless, comparing the historical price action to where we are currently in the cycle. Next up, one of the most popular charts amongst Bitcoin and crypto bulls is the stock to flow model. Currently, this model has Bitcoin fair price between $110,000 and $115,000 per Bitcoin, and it also projects Bitcoin climbing to a million dollars per coin in late 2025. Now, in my opinion, this is another very, very speculative chart that you should take with just a tiny grain of salt that maps out the maximum bull case, if you will. Now, personally, I've always been more of a Bitcoin skeptic myself. There are plenty of arguments against Bitcoin in the crypto market as a whole, which we'll get into more in a little bit. But just the biggest one being it's a non-productive asset. Bitcoin does not produce any cash flows, does not pay dividends, etc. Sure, you can get paid interest on that, but is it sustainable with the current interest rates that we're paying? We've seen Celsius networks blow up and just a disaster caused with all of that. And essentially, Bitcoin is fueled by nothing more than speculation and cult following that one, it'll either be like a digital gold and a store of value or number two, it'll be a future global currency. And that's pretty much it. It's nothing more than a very, very speculative asset as of right now. My opinion though, is if you're going to make a bet on Bitcoin right now and throughout the next year or so is going to be the time to do it. If all of this speculation about Bitcoin being massive in the future plays out, you can buy right now below $20,000 and have a potential 10 bag or plus investment in the future if it pans out. If it goes to a million dollars, then you got yourself a 5,000% return from current prices. Though, of course, nobody should go into Bitcoin expecting a million dollars in the future. That's just my opinion. And in my opinion, the biggest bull cases on crypto include the talent coming in this space. For example, the younger generation is obsessed with the crypto market, and some of the smartest upcoming talent are taking themselves straight into crypto. Secondly, the institutional money and funds that are being created to invest into crypto are growing like crazy. 
Now recently we've seen some more fun blowups of course, we'll talk about this more in a little bit, but as long as this current dip does not wipe out Bitcoin for good, there are bound to be an increasing number of institutional money and funds created into this space as crypto is one if not the most exciting money making investment opportunities, even though it is very very speculative. And thirdly, the Bitcoin ETF. Now I have no idea whether there will be a Bitcoin ETF in the future or not, but it does seem more than likely to happen at some point in the future. If there is a real Bitcoin ETF created, the argument where Bitcoin becomes a real asset that funds almost always allocate at least 1% of funds directly into the investment comes into play and other arguments like that, pension funds, etc. And you bet if we got news of a real Bitcoin ETF coming out, Bitcoin would absolutely skyrocket in price in anticipation for the ETF coming out. Now getting into some of the current events and bear cases against Bitcoin, we have the Luna blow up of course, which has created many investors to lose trust with the crypto market as a whole. Same thing with the Celsius network, which runs a crypto lending platform. They paused all withdrawals and has just added to all of the lost trust and newfound fear within the crypto market. Also hedge funds such as 3 Arrows Capital, 3AC have gotten blown up. They got margin called and failed to meet requirements to avoid liquidations. There's also a big risk of micro strategy being margin called in the future if Bitcoin continues to fall and if they get margin called their Bitcoin will be forced sold and that would absolutely destroy Bitcoin price. It'd probably have a flash crash in an instant. But after talking about all those risks and negative situations for Bitcoin in the crypto market, the absolutely number one largest risk to the crypto market in my opinion is Tether. So Tether is a stable coin and supposedly is supposed to be pegged have $1 backing each Tether coin, though there is a lot of speculation that Tether has very little backing. Recently we can see that there have been major outflows of the stable coin and there is a ton of speculation that the value is not backed by the dollar and has essentially created false money out of it. This New York Times article states, in a worst case scenario, critics say a downturn could spark the crypto equivalent of a bank run. Traders might all rush to exchange their tethers for dollars, only to discover that tether could not fulfill those orders. Investors would lose billions of dollars, forcing them to sell their other crypto holdings, causing potentially a devastating panic that might spill into non-crypto markets as well. Tether got a taste of that scenario last month as cryptocurrencies plummeted, a flood of investors asked to exchange their tethers for dollars forcing the company to pay out an eighth of its reserves or $10 billion over the course of a week and a half. On cryptocurrency exchanges, Tether briefly wavered from its $1 peg. Ultimately, the company said it had met the demand. Tether went on a victory lap, proclaiming that it had weathered the crisis flawlessly, though there are plenty of questions still there with Tether. This is also a great video from CoffeeZilla on the whole Tether situation. I would highly recommend any crypto investors watch this video if you have not already to understand some of the risks and formulate your own opinion of course on the Tether situation, but it is certainly a major risk in my personal opinion. And finally, last year there's a ton of excitement once El Salvador made Bitcoin the national currency, though the whole situation has just been embarrassing for the country and for the use case of Bitcoin. When they made Bitcoin the national currency, they certainly were not planning on losing half of the money they put in. The volatility of this has given both Bitcoin and El Salvador an absolute terrible look. Now in conclusion, like I was talking about earlier, if you are going to make a bet on Bitcoin in the crypto market, the time to do it is going to be between now and the next year or so during this massive dip. Maybe we recover, maybe the dip never ends, that's the risk with Bitcoin. So of course, I would personally would not put in anything more than I afford to lose. But when you weigh the risk reward, in my opinion, there is much more reward potential than risk potential. For those crypto believers out there, in my opinion, there is a real chance that this crash is kind of like the dot-com bubble back in 2000 through 2002. There was something like 90% of those internet companies that did not survive that crash. I think we'll see the same thing with the current crypto crash. There are thousands of coins out there that have pretty much no use case. We need to wash all those out, maybe get Bitcoin, Ethereum, a couple others to have real use cases behind them. Maybe just absolutely fly in the future, or maybe not. Maybe crypto is just not gonna come back as a whole. Of course, that's up to you to formulate your own opinion. My opinion is maybe there's a 50-50 shot that crypto goes wild from here, it's new highs, 
or maybe it ends up dipping some more, maybe camps out in the five to 10,000 area, stays there for years to come until something really big happens. In my opinion, there is pretty much no chance that Bitcoin goes lower than $5,000. Maybe a flash crash would do it from some liquidations. But in my opinion, it's just very, very unlikely. Just due to the cold following that Bitcoin has, in my opinion, there's always going to be buyers unless something major changes, which of course always is a possibility. But on the other hand, if you believe in crypto long term, think we're going to come out of this crash stronger than ever because every single Bitcoin crypto crash, everybody always talks about crypto is dead and nothing's going to come back from this. It was just a speculative bubble and it always has hit new highs in the future. There's only about a, been a 10 year history or so from Bitcoin. So there is less history and that means it is more speculative and risky. So that is a major risk to the crypto market and Bitcoin as a whole. So just weighing out the risk word at this point, maybe Bitcoin drops another 50% from current prices, maybe even 75% from current prices. But on the other hand, it could be a 10x, 20x, 30x plus investment in the future if all good things pan out. So of course, always formulate your own thesis, just giving my personal opinion. I recently have been buying back into Bitcoin. Currently, it's a little bit over 1% of my portfolio. I do plan on growing that to 3 to 5%, maybe a little bit higher over the next year or so, depending on where Bitcoin does and how news and everything plays out and transpires from here. Just my personal opinion, but I do think the risk reward is worth it for myself. I definitely would not want to be left out of crypto at the start of the next bull run. Whether that happens or whether that doesn't happen, I'd be okay with the risk if it does not happen, just because the reward is much greater than the risk as I've been talking about. So that's my thoughts and opinions on the crypto market as a whole. Of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Always do your own research and due diligence before buying any speculative asset, especially crypto. Fully understand all the risks before getting yourself into that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I provided some value to you. If so, make sure that like button and subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate that. It helps me out a lot as well. For anybody interested in joining the private Discord chat, that is the first link down below. So I'll catch you all next time. Be safe in this market. Peace out.